everybody. Okay, let's start. Uh, today I will present Torch. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I will present Torch. Uh, I changed the title that is in the program. I will say that Torch is better for understanding changes. So basically, Torch is a visualization tool that provides an overview of how a small time, pro a small -time program change. I will talk about me just quickly. I'm from Ecuador. It's there because there are some people that don't know where is Ecuador, so I uh, just in case. <laughs> uh, by coincidence, I work with a small talk. When I was just starting my computer science courses, I said, okay, let's do the internship now, and they assigned me to to do some stuff in a small talk. So I didn't know much. Basically, I just had some uh, knowledge of O, but no more. And then I stayed there for four years till the university changed to Java. Uh, and after a while, I said, OK, let's continue my studies. And I came to Europe. And I found that in Belgium, where I did my master, they were working with a small talk. So it was not planned, but I was pretty happy that I continue working with small talk. And now I'm doing my PhD. It's an inter-university program with uh, the Free University of Brussels in the soft lab and with uh, the University of Lille, the Hermot team with Steph. OK. Why we want to provide uh, an overview of changes? We're starting with this scenario. What happened with the integrators, the release master that take all the changes from many developers, and they have to merge or integrate into the, the main release. They just get a bunch of changes from many developers or in our diagram for, from committers that already were pre-merged by then, and they have to understand those changes. There are not uh, much support for them. Because basically, what they receive is just a bunch of changes as a plain text. And they have to understand those changes. So our main focus is basically on the integrators. But after a while, we realized that Torch is also useful for any developer. Because they can understand and, and control their changes before they publish them. So what we want to do is provide a better characterization and help uh, in the understanding of those changes. So we said that integration is typical. The integrator receives many code, and he should have expertise on the software that he's managing. Because if he receives many changes and he does no have an idea of what exactly is that doing, he will spend a lot of time understanding what the chang changes did. So it's necessary to have expertise on the system for easy under the understanding of changes. That, of course, will need a lot of time. In particular, if he needs to read related code or probably not change code to understand on a particular method, for example, that was, uh, that was modified. And we said that there is not enough support for them, especially for taking decisions previous to merge. Because for merging, OK, we have tools that, that support the merging. But what about the previous step to merging, where they have to understand and decide, OK, I will merge this or not, because probably it's breaking some other code or it's not following guidelines. So our idea is how then taking the decisions before the merging itself. So what they are commonly using? They get a bunch of mails with information from developers, some of them containing just the code with the changes. So they have a lot to read. Uh, in in far in particular, they have uh, the Monticello chain list 
that is the one that I'm showing now. Others prefer to use the chain list, the plain chain list. So currently they are working with those tools for understanding the changes. So depending on the chain, that list could be huge. And they just have classes with their changes and the, and the code. So I'm not saying that this is bad, this is pretty good, but we can improve the support for them. So what do we want to do? We want to support mainly integrators as our initial idea, aiding in understanding those changes, uh, taking decisions about the integration process so they get changes for everywhere from different uh, developers. Uh, they are not going to uh, struggle before merging those changes. And for developers, understanding the changes too because a developer starts changing here in a class, changing another class, and at the end, he doesn't realize what exactly he changed, how those changes impact the whole structure of the system. So Torch could also support them. And in controlling their changes before publishing. Torch, these are our initial ideas. Well, we're thinking, okay, how should Torch look like? So we start making some drawings, and it was good that I keep that piece of paper. I just had it today. So the idea was to have like a, a dashboard where, where we can present like the packages that is on top, some metrics summarizing the changes, information about the, the author, uh, symbols, that means the, the vocabulary involved in the changes, and more information about the changes itself. Uh, having this prototype, we ended in touch looking like that. It's not exactly the same, but it has the, all the information and even more that we plan. So Torch is a dashboard that keeps the chain list a bit enhanced, the chain details, but complement them with visualizations, with a set of visualizations presenting and characterizing the changes. And with some metrics, just filters like parameters for the visualization, and of course our conventions. So if you don't know by heart that red uh, means uh, the deletions, you are going to have that information in an area of the, dash the dashboard. So Torch is a visualization tool that provides an overview of the changes, and those changes are based on the structural and, symb and symbolic information. So we compare two versions, we extract all the information, the changes, and we map visually. So we're not only mapping the changes, but we're mapping the whole structure of the system in those versions. It's written in Smalltalk, and it's integrated with Monticello One, so what's good that Colin presented today Monticello One. Uh, in Torch, we have two scenarios for presenting changes. This maybe not that important, but I, I would like to introduce. Because we can compare two versions and get a delta, of, a delta of changes, but I can also say, okay, I have my image with a, a particular version. I want to compare a, another version against my working copy, my image. So that is not necessarily the changes. The changes is if I compare a version with its ancestor, so I'm getting the, the real delta. But uh, we found that some integrators always compare with their ancestors, a version with their ancestor, or just a version against the working copy, the image. So we provide two scenarios. So the dashboard, the dashboard is showing the entities that we get in, in the snapshot that are in the versions like packages, classes, trait, uh, method, variables, extensions, protocols, authors, relationship. At the beginning, I include a lot of protocols because I thought that that could be also interesting, but at the end, got some feedback that we can keep no much detail because it's also using a space in the visualizations. But internally, I am processing all the information. The chain operation, as I am 
using Monticello that provides me the, the data and the changes, I am uh, mapping additions, modifications, removals of packages, classes, all those entities, and I start already working on detecting like renamings or removals of classes, and I should continue with refactorings. Uh, in the dashboard, we have different sections that we call the main component, like the summaries, the conventions, parameters, change list, changes details, and uh, the changes visualizations. And in the changes visualizations, we have a set of them. Each of them sometimes is better for a particular uh, scenario. I'm not saying that one of them is not good or bad, but they, they are more appropriate in different cases. And I will show some examples where you can say that. So this is quickly, as you see in the, in the dashboard, we have packages, see? The representation is simple, we have rectangles and we have triangles. Triangles only for variables and rectangles for the rest of the entities. And for relationship, we have, I should use this. For relationships, we have the edges for in inheritance, and in this case, I don't have other, but I will show later on. For ed uh, the relationship, I have the inheritance. I have when connecting traits, class with use using train, and this is, is for extensions. So I will start with the main component that is basically the set of the visualization. This is the section, and we have now six visualizations, I will probably uh, manage them better in next version because basically uh, there are some that are very similar but just with a small difference on how the information is presented. The main visualization is the changes packet presenting the details. Like we have those, each package map all its classes. Uh, the little square are unchanged classes and the ones with colors, of course, are the ones that change. The convention is, in general, red for removals, green for additions, and blue borders for modifications. So you can see all the classes that belong to a package, and for each class you can see if there are inheritance relations, they are connected, and the changes that they have, this little, Boxes next to the next to the class names are comments. Of course, those in this case those were removed classes, and everything was removed. That was a added class. Everything was added, and those are modifications. So you can see in the modification, a, a green square is because uh, a comment was introduced. Those are the variables that were removed. Some were added, and the methods, the ones that are full red, removed full green are uh, added, and those with blue borders imply modifications. And you see in those with blue borders, you see uh, stripes, white, uh, red, and, um, and green. Those are changes that are mapping to the source code. The length of the bars is the length of the method at the level of line of code. And the the stripes are where the code was added or removed. And of course, for example, here nothing was touched, then this code was added and this code was removed. So that is, is more or less the logic. Ah, we can also connect classes if they, there are inheritance interpackages, but that is only on demand because depending on which classes were changes, we can have many edges crossing packages and that cause a uh, cause noise, so if you want, you set in parameters show the interrelationships. So in general, this set of visualizations, I can summarize like package-centric uh, visualization, class-centric visualization, and symbolic cloud, that is the last one. So we have classes mapped uh, with their respective packages. Let me show better the whole thing. And we have the structural representation where you see the, the, the variables and you see the method. Or you can see also 
a condensing view, just to simplify, because depending of the versions or slices that you are comparing, you can have a, a big dashboard, and we just condense the view. So you can have changed packages with the structural or the condensing view, or you can have the whole packages with the condensed view. And if you are looking at the class-centric uh, visualization, that is basically just inheritance, you have a changed classes with a structural view, or you have all the classes with a condensing and the structural view. Uh, and this is our last visualization, the symbolic clouds. So I already explained more or less this. The only thing is like these edges in this case are the intra package relationship. So if you want to select also the uh, inter package are the ones that are crossings, crossing among, among packages. And the, the package has a blue border because it, ha it has changes, so it is going to appear as a modification. Let me see if I am forgetting something. Uh, I guess not. Okay. I, I talk about a structural and condensed view, just to give a quick idea. This is the structural where you see the, the variables, you see the method, and the condensed view is basically just one bar where you see, using the same colors, uh, a bar connecting different sections, and each section represents a type of change. For example, here you have three attributes added, here you have the length of the bar representing those three attributes, and so on. For this case, this is probably the one that sometimes confusing because at the beginning modification was mapped only in blue so it was easy i have like a blue bar and i have here a blue bar con counting the modify method but after a while i mapped the lines that change so now i have this mapping where the which lines were added or removed but in a condensed view i cannot do that i just counting methods so i present like a, a blue a blue section but all the examples, I'm going to use this uh, format. We have in Torch what we call the omnipresent source code. Because we are presenting visualization, but integrator, the integrator will need to see the, the source code. You know? so, but we want to provide everything in just one uh, panel. So in addition to having the section with the list of changes and the detail of changes, we are also uh, putting the, the source code uh, attached to the visualization. So you just move through a method, you see the source code. So you have this in the dashboard. If you go over, you are going to see the source code. And that is what I mean when these stripes are mapping the changes at the level of line. This is the code, these are the lines that were modified, and that is the bar that you see. And in addition to the source code, you have also extra information. So you can see all the information that belongs to the, to the method. So you have this class basically modify the method that was modified, the source code. And that is what we call the flyback help. By the way, by default, Torch present the changes, but you can also select, I want to see the unchanged classes. And for the changed classes, you are going to see all the structure. And you can go and see the source code. So you have the whole representation of the system. As you see here, in this view, you have two methods, but this class has more. So you can also uh, access to the whole structure and see, okay, in this class, I only change one method. How big is, is the class? So you just go through the name of the, of the class and you are going to see the, the structure, the whole structure. You can do the same for uh, unchanged classes. Going to the summary is pretty simple. We present like a detail of those changes. So you have the total of changes and with these icons, we show like the ones that were added, modified, and removed for each entity. So you see, okay, from 32 packages, three were modified, and so on. We include a set of 
metric so to uh, to give a general idea of the changes and the same for the users so you are going to see for each user the changes and these summaries also serve as a filter because if you select one of those you can just in the chain list uh, visualize only the changes that you are selecting the convention is pretty simple the colors the borders in particular for uh, distinguishing from classes, traits, or extensions, and the icons in general try to follow the colors and conversion, and especially we use some for emphasize specific changes like uh, the, the method was moved to other protocol or a different author modify a method from the original. The parameters in particular is just to, to provide like filtering, so you can visualize in the dashboard all the changes that mean additions, modifications, removals, but you can only want to see ah, only addition. That is going to be useful if you have many changes, so you want to start analyzing just for group of changes. And if you want to see or not the relationship. The changes list is very simple, similar to Monticello, the, to the Monticello list of changes, but we a uh, joint class with its meta class. It doesn't appear as two independent classes. What information, like for example, here, of course, as we have only one class, you need to know if it's an instance or a class method. And this icon is showing that this method mod, uh, was moved to a different uh, protocol, and so on. The changes detail is the same the diff for the source code, and we add some other extra information, the same list and this symbolics, but I'm not going to explain till the end. Okay, now let's see some examples. Uh, by the way, all the examples that I'm presenting here uh, are cases that I extracted from those two repositories, from the Faro inbox and the Faro three, in particular, uh, from package slices. I'm not just taking a version and comparing with uh, another one, its ancestor or whatever, I am uh, analyzing packages slices. So I have each of those has a set of versions, but for each of those versions, I am comparing against a second version. Uh, I decide not to make a demo uh, because as I am extracting all the information from those repositories, I'm going to lose time. So I will probably at the end show how to enter to Torch, but what I'm going to, to, to present is what is Torch in each of those cases. That is the same that I get when I am running the system. And I also did some changes, because uh, yesterday I presented Torch, and I had the, like the same idea, have the list of cases saying which is ch each case, and then present it. But I did that yesterday, and then I was thinking, okay, I presenting this, I am saying this was an introduction of a feature, but that is because I already know, and the rest was listening. So I was thinking, what if they don't see that in the dashboard? So uh, I, I would like to get feedback, and I will, I change it. I'm presenting the dashboard, and you are going to tell me what do you see there. So, in that way, I will have more information about if what I understand and the group of integrators that already evaluate is, is general for not only integrators, but for developers. So, uh, where are the microphones? Because I will probably need, uh, hoping that you are going to, to give your answers, of course. So, let's uh, start with this uh, scenario. This is what I have in in, uh, in the dashboard for when comparing a set of uh, the versions. Why do you think it happened? Uh, one question, what's clear explaining what is each red, blue, those are basically packages, classes, the blue are modifications, the, uh, the red borders imply whole removals, and so on, and green for additions. So if, if you see this, why do you think? Huh? 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 
Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Let me see how oh, I'm going with the time. Okay, okay. Okay, you also said it in a, in a different way. Yeah. Cleanup. It's a cold cleaner. It's a feature also. The feature is basically this. And what happened with this that has some removals? Our clients that modify the code that was connecting with the feature. No? So what's pretty easy. You see, you remove this feature and you remove all the method clients. This one is almost the same, but it has a slight difference. All are real cases that I extract from the repository. You find the difference? Yes, you have here a future removal. You have completely method that were removed, client methods, the ones that are full red. But you have these two that were modified. Look, they have a blue border and they were some areas removed. So those areas are, are pointing to the feature. So you have removed client methods, modified client methods, and the whole removal of this feature. This one. I'm going to give more information about this case. So you maybe. Uh, quickly see the dashboard. I will complement it with more information. You can tell me what do you think it happened. And I have here in the room the author of this chain. Hmm? More ideas? Okay, let me, let me show more. Let me show more of this case before you, you give me your answer. This is basically without the, the interrelationships. You see here I am connecting some classes. In, ah, in fact, I would like to say something. In fact, could be many, many, many uh, interrelationships. But I am only showing the ones that affect changed classes because I don't care for now see relationships among and change the classes. And I will show you this more. This is about that class. Look, this is pointer finder, pointer finder, and pointer finder. I am inspecting one of those methods. Okay, I have someone. a feature move to the superclass? Mm, not really. Someone else is like the author. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like because you are seeing those additions, no? But... Eh, eh, wait, wait. I will like, I will like the, the rest hearing that. Uh, a class has been made obsolete. Its methods uh, that are called or could be called have been uh, made deprecated and the actual feature is implemented somewhere else and, well, everywhere where it is touched, it, uh, it is changed. Thank you very much. That is the answer. See? <laughs> so, a feature was removed, but uh, starting with deprecating, it's happy. So while other clients are also removing the reference. And uh, let's hope that after a while it's completely removed if nobody else is, is using. So having more details, in fact, that is what that happened. You see all its methods, the like this tree, were removed. The three ones, I am only showing one, but the three have the same deprecation. And this, as you see, use proto object pointers to instead. Basically, this is the behavior introducing proto object, and the the removals and modifications were clients of this class. Introducing a feature, pretty easy. It's more or less the same pattern. You are going to have 
instead of remo big removals, you are going to have big additions and some modifications that probably are introducing this uh, new feature. Ah, it's important to mention something. The dashboard reflects the changes of the committer submitted. So the idea is to have a one chain or one big chain, but representing a task submitted. So the dashboard is going to reflect that. But if a developer uh, made some, uh, solve some bugs and different tasks that maybe are not related, and he makes one submission here, would be difficult to see that pattern because you are going to have uh, many additions, many modifications. So I cannot do anything in respect to that because that is how it was published. So you have additions and modifications introducing the, the new user interface. Ah, so far, I have presenting the view that is changes by packages with the details of each class. But you saw in the original dashboard that were six. So, and also I am showing only the ones with the structural information, but I would like to emphasize the other ones that are also very useful in a particular case. What happened where, when you are touching method in hierarchies, big hierarchies that are defining in different packages? Here, if you see these three packages, you are not going to know that those are connected. So it's very useful in this case to have the inter-package relationship. So uh, now it's clear that these are classes inheriting this and this, but uh, still, this view does not convince me. And that is why I said I will only also add just the class inheritance view for all the classes that belong to those packages. So that is what I said we can do it better. So the same representation now is like this, without the packages. I personally found this clearer than the, the, the one before. If you see this, what do you think it happened? Classes by string, white string, and to the uh, sequence collection. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. That is also known as a. Hmm? Excuse me? That is also known as a refactoring. Mm -hmm. By the way, now I have additions, modification, and I don't have information about refactoring. I, I start working on that because I have to identify refactoring. But for now, I am not mapping that. But the idea is that the dashboard will present also that details. So basically, here we have push up a group of methods. And what is this? Huh? This could be a new behavior. Because you see, in the main, in the top class collection, something was introduced. And suddenly, all the subclasses also have that new method. So, okay, you don't, no? How do you know that? Hmm? Ah, of course, in this, you don't see, but when you are hooking all the methods with the omnipresent fly, you will see that. So, you have, and not showing that because I already have, uh, big number of slices, but when you expect the each method, those four methods are representing an introduction of a method. While this side of the hierarchy is showing push up. So basically here you have two tasks in this hierarchy that was submitted together. So the idea is that integrators can have a quick overview of what happened in the system. If you have this view, helps a bit more that only have the plain list of classes with changes. Because you see how these classes are connected and you see how big those changes are. This, this case, here I, I attach, I, I don't see, yes, it's completely. I attach a bit of information, the metrics, about this change. You see, this was a quite big change. It touched 41 packages, 64 classes, and modified 45, uh, sorry, 54 
classes. So, uh, I added this just in case you forgot that yellow box is a modification at the level of the comment in the class. Do you think this is going to speed the time understanding the changes? Because if I don't have this, I will have many, many changes and whose understanding is going through each of them, reading the whole source code, ah, this modify a comment, modify a comment, but it is time that is going to be consumed. Having this, he can see, there, uh, here there are no method, there are no variables, nothing. The only that was touched was the comments. And there are few cases where something else happened. But in this scenario, yes, was a, a documentation fix. Because even those methods that had modifications modify the, the, the comments inside the source code. And this is almost the last one. Do you see something in this case? Is green, red, most of them, yes. Green, red, there is small, oh. green, red. Yeah, there is a few, uh, but most of them are like green, red. That means something that was removed. That could be a huh? method rename. Mm, perfect. Method rename, what else? <laughs> okay, but when you have this kind of changes and many packages and classes, Maybe it's not that easy to see what happened in the dashboard. Hmm? Yeah, could be. Could be. Yeah, but I think it's not that clear what happened. You have an idea, but it's not that clear comparing with, uh, with the removal or the introduction of a feature. Okay, that's another idea. Someone else? I didn't understand what he said, but to me it appears the protocol in, in the one class has been extended and the usage of the, uh, of the class has been changed in all referencing ones. So it's just a, a new method and it's, uh, uh, the older use probably is exchanged by the new method. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's valid, it's valid idea. But for these cases, I, I complemented the dashboard. I said that in the dashboard I presented a structural information. Uh, sorry, there is some, someone else. Maybe it's an add parameter refactoring? Could be. <laughs> <laughs> I said that, that uh, Torch is showing structural information, but also symbolic. So and we consider that there are some cases where the symbolic information could, uh, could speed the understanding of the change. So I will quickly introduce the symbolic clause. In the symbolic clause, basically, we have the name of the selectors, the name of the classes that are being accessed in the, in the methods, and the access to the attributes. I'm not mapping the whole source code. I am mapping just senders, uh, reference to classes, and accesses to attribute. And I, at the end, I include also accesses to some special variables like self, nil, super, and so on. But the idea is to provide hints of the intention of the developer when changing the source code. It's important to mention that the symbolic clouds are useful when there, are, when there is little vocabulary involved in the changes because if you change it a lot, you are going to see 
many words and you are not going to understand at all. But when you have big changes and was just few uh, a little vocabulary introduced or removed, it's going to be clear what happened. So for this example, the symbolic cloud is showing this. In the symbolic cloud, I said that these are the, you have uh, senders, reference to classes, attributes, and each of them is mapping to the occurrence of that in the source code. So you see the, the font size big is because it occurs a lot. And the color follows the same convention. Green addition, red modification. Yeah, excellent. Is this in? No, no. Right? yeah, it's finished. Is this uh, in source code of changed methods? Yes. Or no, no, not the whole method, the source code of a method, just the part that changed it. Okay. Because that is what I'm showing, just a change. Perfect. What happened here is that some method call were replaced. Sorry, but nobody was right. But you see, I found in this case the symbolic cloud very useful because you have few vocabulary and you are going to see, ah, okay, this was introduced and this was removed. The name is nothing alike, so it's not that it was renamed, it was replaced. Here are a few of examples. Those are uh, different uh, cases, but all are showing the same. Replaces of method calls. You see here, add if accent was removed with add put, and add if accent put was introduced. If I remember, Lucas was the author of these chains, and this I don't remember. But here you have something. You have is nil, and you have equal nil. You see? So those are also changes that affect the, the source code, but this is really huge to, to have the, a clear idea that what happened. Okay, in summary, uh, we have an initial version of Torch. This is the website, it's very simple, so you can download. I have also some images where I already preload Torch. You can try. Uh, we are providing a characterization and overview of changes in source code. And this, we are pretty happy to have like the contextual omnipresent div. And we believe that we are helping integrators in understanding changes by means of these visualizations. We already performed a limited case of study with uh, a group of integrators. And we have a uh, really good feedback and very nice ideas that we're having a to-do for the next version. And this is Torch. Do you have some questions? Have you done any work on showing conflicts? Okay, for now, we're showing just how the changes happen. We're not showing conflicts because the conflicts you get when you are doing the merging itself. When you are merging, you get the conflicts. For now, we're just showing the changes between two versions. And our next, uh, our next step is to integrate the merging things in Torch. So from the, the dashboard, you can say, ah, I would like this to include in the, in the main release and have it more interactive because for now it's visualization to, go to give the idea of the changes. Okay, thank you. Uh, so when you create the visualization, you, you create the refactoring uh, change also? That is something that I start working because I initially I map the information that I get when uh, using Monticello, the changes. I have a, a set of changes I am mapping. But I, I start 
working on identifying renamings, for example. I already did some workings on when a class is moved, for example, a class changed its superclass and maybe was removed, but then that the same class appeared in a new package with a, a, a different superclass. For me, that is was just a class move that changed its superclass. So I already start working on that, but the next, next step is identifying refactorings and also try to make a distinction uh, between semantic and no semantic changes because that is also very important for integrators. You could later apply it also. Sorry, can you repeat it? Because when you create a visualization, you know which refactoring you're visualizing. You have enough information to create the refactoring engine object, well, which I could have be applied just also. Uh, in the snapshot, there is not that information that this change belongs to a refactory. I have to, to process Create it. it, yes. I have to process all those changes and say, okay, those belong to a, a refactoring. I have to do that. That is part of the next step. Maybe just extending on that. So I find this very inspiring, especially uh, seeing patterns of change. So not just refactoring, it's just general change, uh, additions, uh, new features, feature removal, whatever. Um, it would be quite interesting to have a categorization of that. To I think there are maybe only, I don't know, a dozen or, or more typical changes. So what you can see then is what's missing. So a typical change of this kind would involve this and this and this, mm -hmm. but in this change there's this particular aspect missing. So w why, why is it missing? See, uh, now you, you can see the changes, but it's very hard to say, um, there's a bug introduced because some necessary change wasn't there. You understand what I mean? Not completely. Okay. So let's, because take, let's take an example. You, you want to introduce double dispatch. So you have to change a lot of things in different classes. Oh, can you speak louder, please? Okay. Yeah. So when you introduce double dispatch, you have to implement mm -hmm. a lot of little methods in different classes. Is it still? Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> When you introduce double dispatch, <laughs> you have to um, add a lot of little. Oh, this is awful. <laughs> you have to add a lot of little methods um, to a lot of different classes, and if you just see the the methods added, you won't uh, see which method you missed, you you didn't implement. So yeah. But if you have a pattern of a typical double dispatch add. Uh, you would see right away, oh, this method was not implemented, but it should. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, that could be go good also add like particular patterns in addition to the common refactorings. So also are going to speed more the process of understanding because we're going to see uh, this kind of chain fits for this pattern, but something else is missing. Yes, I understand and I think it's a very good idea. But for now, we're presenting the data and let's hope Next version can con contain. Already we have a, a long to-do list. This is very cool. Um, I'm, I'm curious if you, as you've studied different change sets, if you've found renames to be a, a problem, and if you've had any thoughts on what you do about renames, as far as method renames and even more complex class yeah. renames. Well, I found uh, methods and variable renames, and at the beginning I wanted to, to, to work on that, but I was like, for example, especially for variables, maybe CC, but for method depending, I have to inspect all the source code and I wanted to do very, very complete the, the identification of renaming and then one of my bosses said, you should start with something simple, at least to identify a few cases. So I said, okay, I'm going to do later on. But I found, and in those cases, what you have is like, let's say, uh, the same amount of method added, the same amount of method removed or variables. So you have la, like that, or and also when the class was uh, renamed. But uh, still it's not that clear just seeing that. It's important that we have a different uh, convention for, it, for representing that renaming. But I found those cases. Yes, sorry. Um, maybe this is not uh, touch related, but far Um Sorry, I arrived late to the talk, so if you already explained, sorry. Um, so right now, if I am a far integrator, I can visualize, I take a, a slice from a far inbox, and I 
you analyze and visualize them. You can uh, inspect any repository that you add in okay. Monticello. Perfect. Now my question is, do you pretend to do integration with Monticello or Scribloader uh, um, that is used in Faro to create re releases? I mean, now I can visualize with this. Then I have to do an alt tab, go to Monticello, and do, do the integration. So well maybe go a step forward and provide well directly from Torch something. Our well final goal is to work on a, 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 a better merging support. And after this, I already start working on a, a meta model with the idea of having the whole information of not only changes at the level of entities, but at the level of slices. Uh, branches and all the things, and then integrate with Torch, so I can. That that is the goal of my PhD, but I started with the easy part. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, so something that you would like to work on this is. Could I see the impact on a change? Because right now you see the change. Now I would like to know how much that it could could impact. We are in a dynamic language, so we will have cloud of changes, <laughs> but or compare feature between the past and the present, so that I know. Oh, in the past I had all this stuff that were touched and things like that. If you have ideas, just send a mail to Veronica. And okay, the program. So now we we have a short break so that the people from the workshop and you have the time to refresh your mind. And then we will have the show us your project program. So normally that's really funny, huh? It's simple. No, the guy canceled the talk. He could not make it, I was really... You should send a mail to Steven to tell him that he should write the seaside book he want to write. So no, he just, uh, he, he really wanted to be here and then he had to stop and things like that. So after the break, we have show us your project. So how show us your project works? You have 10 minutes, no more. After 10 minutes, we will start to upload. <laughs> it works really well, huh? I can tell you. Huh? So you have... Sorry? 10 minutes, 10 minutes straight. 10 minutes straight, okay? So I, th I don't know when we, that should be, which, wait, I have the program. Yeah, we should be, we should, we should do f 10 minutes break and then we restart. We will send the student volunteer to grab you. So if you have a short, if you, if you want to show something, can you come here? 